Planting with Nick's post that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago has really had me thinking. Have you ever noticed that you feel driven or compelled to buy more and more plants? I have, for sure. When I was working and had disposable income for plants, I would make a weekly visit to the garden centre to check their reduced shelves, often buying a plant or two for a couple of pounds. I loved the feeling of finding a bargain, diversifying my collection, getting something new and interesting and having more plants to show off with my community. It would help my mental health to go out and begin to see regular faces and friendly smiles. This form of retail therapy helped me with my feelings of being isolated and lonely a lot. When I stopped working and no longer had any disposable income to spend, I noticed it was a niggling transition. Not only because I had removed a source of human interaction that was meaningful to me, but because I still felt I needed to go buy plants or buy plants online. It was a clear drive that I had. I effectively went cold turkey on this habit. Instead, I enjoyed watching other people on YouTube go plant shopping and sharing their plant hauls. I focused on celebrating the plants that I already had. That feeling of wanting more and more plants didn't cease for a while. Under lockdown, due to COVID-19, I felt the drive persist, but only going out wasn't an option at all. It was certainly strange to notice this feeling that I was having. And while it did niggle, it was kind of nice to be able to notice this about myself and reflect on it. I wonder how many other people in our houseplant community have felt the same way. The consequence of this was that I gradually felt myself shy away from this drive. Seeing changes in the world because of the pandemic, being anxious about the future and developing ever more increasing concern for our environment meant that I actually swung right over the other way. I still enjoy watching videos of people sharing their plant hauls and love it, how it is helping them in so many ways, especially with their mental health. However, in the back of my mind, there has been an ever-growing niggle about it. That niggle has led to me to question how much I am driven by consumerism and how damaging my consumerist drive is for our environment. I don't mean just in terms of my houseplant hobby, but generally. I've always tried to be environmentally conscious, but taking a step back due to not having the funds to participate has meant that I've taken a really good look at the impact that I have. If you'd like a recommendation for a channel that I really enjoy, check this one by Miss Bird. She also shares her mental health journey and experiences. I love that for challenging mental health stigma and being open, as I wrote about before. There is a debate, I think, around whose responsibility it is to make a difference, environmentally speaking. It could be considered that the impact we have as individuals is a drop in the ocean of the impact we have on our planet. In our house, we recycle, reuse, and avoid buy buying new things, always choosing second hand if we can. We do have a car, but it's economical and we rarely use it. I avoid buying groceries that are wrapped in plastic. However, being able to make these considerations are, to a degree, luxuries afforded by our socio-economic state. Some people have to commute by car. Sometimes we don't have the time to find second-hand things, etc. There is also the point of view that says these are all small things. What really matters is what the big corporations are doing. Unless those big polluting companies make a difference and change their ways, I think that what we do as individuals is relatively inconsequential. I also resent the feeling that this is a problem for us as individuals alone. It really does seem that it is, doesn't seem that it is. I'm concerned that this will come across as critical of the way people choose to live their lives. I don't really want that, more to encourage reflection and figuring out what you think is right for you and all of us. Within our houseplant community on Instagram, I've noticed an ever-growing trend of people being environmentally conscious and sharing their views and efforts. I love this trend. I was particularly in awe of chi plants sharing their experience of collecting disposable plastic straws from a beach. Within a very short time, they had collected an alarming amount. They don't say where the straws had came from, but if we didn't create the demand for these straws, perhaps there would be less waste. It's that debate again, isn't it? 
perhaps it is up to companies to make the change perhaps that's a luxury some can't afford due to business costs and overheads I love to ride my bike through the forest last time I was out on the trails I found five discarded face masks some of them disposable some not I was aghast I could only hope that they were accidentally dropped by fellow cyclists I was on bespoke mountain bike trails Thinking of the number of masks used around the world and then discarded bakes my noodle. Collectively, oof. For the record, I wear a mask. I don't think the compulsion that I have to buy more and more plants is unique to houseplants at all, or me. My husband certainly feels a drive to keep up with his peers in the Warhammer stakes. He always has an eye on new technology video games and super expensive bikes. What other things do people that you know collect and feel driven to buy? Now that we're a single income household and can just about cover our bills, I suspect my husband will be feeling a similar niggle to me and find a frustration in not being able to keep up with his hobbies and interests at the same rate as his peers. Or I suppose he might experience negative thoughts and emotions in the direction of feeling left behind or left out. I should ask him about this. He is pretty reflective though. He would say that we are indoctrinated by our capitalist society to believe that we need more and more. That we must have the next solution to a problem that we didn't know we had until we were shown we had one. Like, for example, air purifying houseplants. There are a lot of articles that say houseplants have help improve the quality of air in our houses. Conversely, I was recently listening to Plantarina challenging this as a myth. So I'm leaning towards the idea that this is an example because through this marketing tool we are told that our homes need purified air and we need houseplants to fix it, so we should buy more plants. All the while, is the quality of air in our homes that bad? And do plants really improve it? I feel that it is ingrained within us to need the next new thing. Coming from a background in sociology, perhaps I can make a link between the idea of wanting more, rarer and interesting houseplants and then being a form of capital within our houseplant community. Bordeaux coined the term habitus to describe how we see the world around us and react to it. For example, if we see houseplants in our world as required to participate fully in our houseplant community, and we see others growing their collections, talking about their plants and how this helps their well-being, we learn that this is an appropriate way of being in this world. We pick up the skills, values and habits through association with our community. We feel connected and supported. I certainly do. Continuing down a Bordeauxian rabbit hole, joining this idea of habitus with the concept of cultural capital. Cultural capital refers to the tools that we have as individuals to, to participate in our worlds. In terms of houseplants, when we have a collection and the knowledge and sharing that goes alongside that, we are rich in terms of cultural capital. We strive to gain the assets that improve our cultural capital and enable our maximal participation in the community. From this perspective, it makes sense that we would want to grow our houseplant collection so that we can feel a sense of belonging and involvement. I know how much I love and feel embedded in the community when I get so many direct messages telling me how I have so many beautiful plants and how great my collection is. It feels very rewarding, so removal of that would also be hard. I think COVID-19 lockdown might have caused many of us to be without our usual habits of consumption and retail therapy. We couldn't go out and do our usual things. I wonder how many people who were able to keep their jobs save money during this time. I know that lots of people have said they turned to houseplants during lockdown or their collections grew significantly, mine did too. People I've been talking to have mentioned how they fell out of control and anxious and houseplants have really helped them to cope. So I wonder as well whether building our houseplant collections in lockdown was a way of scratching the itch, so to speak. For me, consumerism and environmentalism are 
most definitely complicated issues that are tied up in our mental health, political views and cultural practices. I feel like they're a bit of a minefield to navigate. However, what is right for me is to be conscious of my habits and try to reduce my impact on our environment. So while house, my houseplant collection has grown a lot recently, I have some ways that I've tried to be more environmentally kind. For pots, I collect up and reuse food containers. To get new plants, I have swapped locally with others without need for a car, packaging, transport or money. I collect rainwater and oh boy, has there been a lot of that this week. I source soil as eco-consciously as I can. My current mix is sand from somebody's skip, coconut peat and soil improver from the waste treatment plant. What other ways do you have of reducing your impact but sustaining your houseplant a hobby? I really like this suggestion from Marine the Plant Machine, who is an environmentalist. For a touch of hypocrisy, I am now a way to open a care package that my husband's company sent. So exciting. I can't handle the excitement of an unopened box with surprises inside. Again though, in the back of my mind is how much needless waste this also generates.